Aloha mai kako. We're starting our live feed and I'm introducing Auntie Lili Uokalani Ross. And she's um, going to introduce us to what our topic is tonight and why this is important. Okay. Um, we need to take a little uh, history walk. And I can only start from where it started with me. So in 1970, my mother, her grandmother, and her traditional elders got together on the island of Maui. So call out to all of Maui. The traditional elders got together and started to address the 100-year closure of the Hawaiian Homes Act. So in case you're not familiar, 1920, the act was written by Prince Kuhio and was put into Congress. In 1921, Congress released an act and of course it was altered. They had a hundred years to make sure that that act was addressing the Hawaiian people and restoring them back to the land. 2020 is the 100 year. Now, what does that mean? I'm going to hand that over to Kepa. Yes. So you need to know that Io Kepa does not stand on a ground by himself, but the traditional elders that have already passed have left a legacy of information for us to continue forward. So Io Kepa, Aloha, honey. So we have Aloha. Yeah. Aloha, kako. Um, no kepo kael, moko keave. Um, beneficiary trust council member on the island of moko keave. And the BTC, um, the BTC has been operating on almost every island, but we've been working exclusively on the big island for five and a, five and a half, almost six years now. Um, going out into the communities, to our native Hawaiian communities. Um, not only our homestead associations, but also to um, our successors who are less than 50, 50%. And so a little bit about the, the, the Beneficiary Trust Council. Um, it's, a, it's a bunch of waitlisters based on Moku Keawe. We have Kane, Wahine, um, Kupuna, and Mokuas. And uh, basically, um, we, we decided uh, about six years ago that uh, the younger voice... I guess with the direction and the education now that we have received and the data that we have been reading and digesting that we needed to make a, a stand to um, alongside our kupuna, but we needed to do it with a little bit more bigger number and a, and a fresh perspective. And so that's a little bit about the Beneficiary Trust Council. We are located in every six districts. We have a rep in every in every district, seven districts on Moko Keawe. And so... If you guys want, we can give you guys a contact after um, how we can get together. But after after this six years of collecting data with the community and finding that homelessness and um, bad health and basically everybody's getting priced out and to make everything worse, other people, non-Native Hawaiians, were receiving leases and taking up the opportunity that the state of Hawaii in 1959 compact deal that is supposed to be held in trust for the betterment and so we decided that we couldn't wait no longer and so as we develop these um these communications with all of our beneficiaries and successors on moko Kiave, we started to gather and um do activities where we would um educate and stimulate and basically update everybody on on our our um, our findings. Um, we in nine, in two thousand sixteen we we gathered and came to a conclusion that we were going to build an ahu ahu aula um, across the sheep station umuula, and this was meant to bring awareness about the parents that I've lost my mom, my grandpa, and there's many of hundreds of thousands that lost theirs. And we felt that part of the department's deal was, even though they wasn't there when our parents died, I think that would be a perfect opportunity to accelerate 
and give our family members some closure. And so we built um, an ahu in memory of our loved ones that we have lost as our first step. Let and me, then later on... A Kepa, Kepa fast kind. So, so just clarifying, you guys built the ahu across the street. This is Monica Axis across the street yeah. from Haleoku Hill. Yes. Um, and this was for all the waitlisters that died on the waiting list, right? Your yes. Okay. Success beneficiaries. Okay. Okay, I'm sorry. sorry. That's important to know. I don't yeah. think a lot of people know that. Yeah, nobody knows that. Yeah. So, so when thank you for thank you for stopping and interjecting because yeah, a lot of people don't understand that that these are the things that we have been doing and working for. And so as we as we um. Uh, as we propelled this program, there's the Aina Mauna Legacy Program that was passed 10 years ago. Uh, and the Aina Mauna Legacy Plan, <clears throat> it has from Queen Lilo Kalani's Trust, Queen Emma's, DLNR, um, Forest Trails, there's military, there's so many people that had a stake within this process. But this process was an exclusive one for the Hawaiians, mm -hmm. the Native Hawaiians, according to the 1921 Hawaiian Homes Commission Act and their successors. And so we managed to get on through a government appointed board because they decided to stack their cards with all their people. But we managed to get the BTC on so that we could have a voice. And so within this Ainamana Legacy Program, there's a C1P1 process, community ag, community pastoral. Um, these are what we voted for. There was a meeting, government approved, DHHL approved. The top three things we voted was course control, accelerating home leases for beneficiaries, and course control plus of the security. We needed to have security. And the third one was a community pastoral and ag which is labeled within this policy that was voted and approved by the governor mm -hmm. what's so the security we for this, well what security is that for the three? security would be for the homestead because Humuula's sheep station was burnt down by non-native uh, by a non-native which was basically tourist tourism that was happening on hawaiian homes that was never supposed to happen but um william isla and his other um deal in our agent, Mr. Pacheco, somehow managed to have all access on Mauna Kea. So he was responsible for burning down that historical building that was built in the kingdom. So we know theft was happening, we knew trespassing was happening, but we had to we had to vote. So we got the community to vote. All of the associations voted unanimously in that order. And then we, we initiated phase two, which was the bill of Haleo Kuhio on Prince Kuhio's birthday, 2018. Right. And so, and so that's how we have been um, working amongst our community and family members on these kind of historical dates mm -hmm. and remembering the first binding contracts because that's why we we had to interject because there is so many state officials and rich politicians there's that have access and not only access, exclusive rights to make money on these parcels that was supposed to be held for the betterment. So that's kind of like a little bit of the fast run on what Haleku right. Hill in the last year and has Humu been. Ula. Um, yeah. So Humu Ula uh, is, is the base of Mauna Kea. It wraps around Mauna Kea. So if people don't know that from other islands, Humu Ula is the road goes through up the access road to Mauna goes through Humu Ula, right? Yes. Uh, so yes. that's why it's so important. Humuula. It fronts Pohakuloa. And, and, and it's across the street, well, from Pohakuloa, uh, right? Yes, right. And you got to also remember, you know, as we as we call for the right names, then you know we're heirs because that land belongs yes. to the last queen was Victoria Kamamalu. Yeah. Kamamalu. So, yeah. yes. So, so as, you know, people start to say, this is seated, this is state, you know, we have to be clear, right? Because within the Admissions Act of 1959, Crown and and the seated, Crown seated slash seated, and the state lands, the government lands, are held in trust for the Native Hawaiians too. So they made so, themselves our trustees of our lands and we were their 
beneficiaries. And they're, and they're, they're only trustees at that if we they're allow only them trustees. to be. Okay. They're only trustees. So when you look at the compact deal, 1959, it was to help manage and give out these parcels to Hawaiians. It wasn't, there was no contract where they were supposed to be arresting us. So can we clarify, so, can we clarify a little bit that <clears throat> the their trust responsibility was to actually do as what the people request of them to fulfill our needs as beneficiaries yes for so, our betterment so that, yeah that, the deal, and it's not the deal. to do what they want us to do or There's, any corporation or none at all yeah they are to Military, obey the people so government. if i can inject one more time io kepa io kepa uh humula is the pico on top of the pu'u a uh, Mauna. Yeah. Yes. Right? Yes. So this particular pico actually covers the entire island. Yes. yes. And every single Ahupuao or district on the island of Hawaii. Yes. And that's how you can most say yes. it and get straight to the point. Everybody's involved. Yes. <clears throat> Everybody's involved just like how you said, right? And so so even 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 as this grew, these these awareness, right? These things, um, because of because of the Haleoku Hill, we have collected the data. We have hauled the rubbish to maintain the properties across our P1 section. And we have stopped at least three to four theft of property and trespassers since the time we've been there. So we've done the, we've done the data. And from all the state parks um, charged, whether it's Haleoku Ave down in Kona, Onaunao, I think it's around the 30 to 35, where Volcano National Park is around 25. We would take the minimum or the or the or the middle number of that, which would be a soft 20 or a little bit more. We're looking at almost six million a year. Hey, yeah. Bro. So we're looking at six million because as we did the data, so that was so encouraging is we had to do the data to make a claim to our property yes. and our people yes. that this is how much we can generate without dipping into the general funds and when without you talk, holding anybody hostage so when you talk about the data what kind of data collecting did you guys do at Haleoku Hill? How, uh, how well, well the, 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 the data was focusing on to show the state that there is a path where we could be self-sufficient and we could get the proper education for when the tourists do go to not trespass or to even not go at certain times. So see, this was all about the state trying to do it already, but they didn't have the native Hawaiians that they they needed. They were just trying to implement it on their own. Mm -hmm. And that's why things have failed because they haven't looked to the native Hawaiians or to the heirs yes. mm -hmm. um, of the Moku to do the leading and the, and the, and the storytelling and the education. And, and so, so that was counting cars, right? That's what you guys did for months and months. Was over a year. Over a and year. So, okay. Yeah. So 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 like before the lava came, we were averaging eleven to twelve hundred a day cars. So do the numbers, right? And so when the lava came and everything was stuck at the national park, then everything fluxed up Mount mm -hmm. So Even we, more. we pictured that was a third, uh, a three hundred percent increase, right? Because everybody was just going up Mauna Kea because they couldn't go anywhere else. And so doing to, to, to show the state that they have failed, we have shown them how that we can manage our destination without with, with without doing it and making a big deal out of mm -hmm. it, right? Right. And so the acceleration part is all part of the plan because the Hawaiian Homes Commission Act, just as OHA, it wasn't built to do a hundred years. It would naturally, because of the illegal overthrow in Act 359, it already talks about the governance and the package. So that's where kind of we're, we're speeding up to. As we come off Haleoku Hill, we're coming on Waimea Nui now, right? Yeah. And so so now we can just jump straight into Waimea Nui and the letter, as, yeah. as Auntie Guys was um, discussing. Right. Yeah, right. So, so this letter... You know, uh, I hear a lot of people say, you know, everybody wants this Fed rec and all a Fed rec. And believe me when I say, uh, we've done a hundred years. Next year makes one hundred. Yeah. The contract is only for a hundred. It's only for ninety nine. 
years. And believe me when I say it, we do not want federal recognition. Uh, ole. After a hundred years, we have only managed 9,000 on out of a hundred years. So, so do the math, right? We're looking at maybe a hundred awards for 90 something years. So well, we're not just looking 9, at, we're not looking at just the 50% Hawaiian. Yes. We're going. And so, and so that's, and that's where we're, that's where we're leading up to. So in the Hawaiian Homes Commission Act, thank you, Auntie, for leading us that, that these lands will be held for the beneficiaries and successors. And successors. So if you just close your eyes and think about it like this. 1920, everybody had a family member around that time. They were beneficiaries at that moment in time. We're talking about majority of our Hawaiian population or 50% or more. And so with that being said, that's why we have to bring everybody back to the, to the, to the table again, because this hundred years that the state has been only managers, they have failed and they have felt in default and they're compiling, condemning evidence of fraud, corruption, and God and Kilkoa knows what else, yeah. Yes. So we need this hundred years is coming up. OHA has just passed a bill, I think, uh, three weeks ago, or well, not a bill, but an in-house resol that would allow um, self-governance mechanism. If you guys are familiar with OHA, they have a you can go to OHA's um, online site, and there's a triangle. Self-governance is in that triangle, along with self-sufficiency and um, health and all this great stuff that is the components to a better kanaka and a better household um, hale for a kanaka. And so these these mechanisms have been firing. You guys are familiar with the kana'i olavalu, right? Yep. So you guys got to remember, kana'i olavalu was popular in 1990. Why were they popular in 1990? And they changed their names. Because I believe, I could be wrong, but... If you, do the, if you do the numbers from 1990, you add 30 years, that's the end of 100 years. Mm -hmm. So that's why I believe that they had to put these mechanisms with the Constitution together. Because the state cannot be manager for over 100 years after the original contract. Yeah. And so even as successors, that's why I get excited and I urge all my brothers, cousins, aunties, and uncles out there who are less than a quarter, half of a quarter, or one half of that two, that 12.5. Back in that day, your, your parents, your grandparents, they, they had. And just because the day wasn't awarded, that doesn't mean their successorship ends. Mm -hmm. And so we have enough land base to manage all the Native Hawaiians. Yes. But this is, why, this is where I encourage everybody though on the wavelength right now, right? Is that the destination? Is that, is that what we want to see? Do, do we want to do new things? Do we want to, how do we move forward with all the knowledge that we have of our past and all the things that happened to us in the present? Next year, I can't urge anybody anything else more urgent. All my, my family members who are less than 50 quarter, you guys are needed yes. now. Now is the time to rally, to come to the understanding that we have our own destination in our hand. We have all the tools that our kupuna left us. The yeah. path is still there, but we have to project it yeah. right now at the right time. And so I know people might say, how do you know this is the last round? I don't know. But all I do know is a contract is ending and a new contract is going to take place. The state has already tried to rush a 65-year extension on all state lands. If you guys are familiar with the news this past few weeks or last month, sorry, Kalamai, yeah. but they are fast-forwarding that extension of 65 years. Yes. How can they extend 65 years? The state is not even 65 years old from 59. Mm -hmm. They are scary. This contract, it even, I'm not saying I have all the answers, but what I am saying is, everybody and all hands on deck because this involves everyone. The homestead and the associations and the department and the governor 
has only been able to manage this boat with 9,000 beneficiaries. So that's all they got of, on of the land. Years that they only could that's manage so a small sad. Group of that Native Hawaiians. How many so still on months. the wait list, Kepa? Well, there's there's about I would say 27, 33. But when you ask the state or you ask the HHL, they can't even tell you how much people have died waiting. Yeah. So if they don't have the number for deaths, then they don't have the numbers for exact count. That's how I see it, right? If they cannot produce the data for how much people have lost, then they cannot possibly say the correct number to how much is waiting now. Because mm -hmm. I'm counting, I'm counting successors. Yeah, I me, mean, I'm counting successors. I'm not counting just beneficiaries 50 and above. I am counting successors because the act talks about what Prince Kuhil's intent was, was 132nd. One drop. One, one drop, drop Kanaka. One drop. And so that's why I urge everyone who is listening <clears throat> to spread this awareness out that now is the time. The Hawaiian Homes Commission Act was just adopted into the statehood, which was and now called the state of Hawaii as managers. And their management contract has an expiration date. Yeah. And expiration all. date and they're scared they're, yes. they're they're doing everything in their power to, and to and, and, keep and, us and, in the and, dark and about me, that and believe me when i say they're listening tonight oh right? yeah they're listening tonight yeah talk and about so, talk about and Ayla so, and his and his reappointing or whatever's what just happened so the so so governor Ige did a did did a ponzi on us so last night if, if you guys got to watch the the the, the, the reappointment uh he couldn't, so Mr. Ayla was trying to get into Oha, but thanks to Namoko Keave Ohana, right, when he came around the corner, he was leading, I believe, by point eight or almost a, almost a full point ahead of everybody coming from Oha into Big Island this past race for Oha trustee. We, the family, made a decision that we would vote for everybody but him, but him. Mm -hmm. and it worked. Yes. Big Island, well, yeah. Big Island. Because yeah. when he came here, he only averaged a 0 0.002 something. And so he ended up That's losing sad. the rates by 0 0.04 or something like that. Oh, so close. Something, something slim. But you see how important it was? Because this person is the one that sold Mauna Kea, right? Mm -hmm. Prematurely as DLNR chair. And this guy is the one who was selling resources, the, the angel fishes, right? The, the, the fish, the, the aquarium fish yes, trade, yeah. yeah. Yes. Have 2000 a pop. And when they, when they couldn't pass the law that it was legal, he tried to persuade the law that it was legal, which the law didn't allow it still to this day. So it is technically a crime that he committed. He's a yes. criminal, yeah. He's a criminal. He's a free and criminal. So, and, so when, and so when he cannot win through the voting of the people, what's next for the crooked? Yeah. They get appointed. Exactly. So now we can fast forward to what happened yesterday. He was he was going for the chair. The Senate didn't approve the chair, only approved him as deputy. So he couldn't get the front running seat which he wanted. So Mrs. Um, what is her name? Joby Mazagatani. Yeah. She was slick and slick, baby. She jumped on as soon as they said they wasn't going to approve him. She tried to reapply and put in her application on the floor. What? And they stopped her. I didn't yeah. know so, that. So, Fuvela guys, hey, well, hello, Fuvela Ooh. guys, you know, well, like, you, know, you guys, guys stopped her because, just like they said, they wasn't going to give her the chair and they wasn't going to give her the deputy. So she lost that. So Ige, now, by default, the deputy is instantly the chair. Yes. Yeah. By default, yeah? So yeah. once again, they cannot, we stopped them again at the Senate floor. You see him? Yeah. You yeah. see the trend of Moko yeah. Kiave? You see the trend? We stop in on at every turn when we want to. And we did. And so now, Ige, because it was in default, he could only put the deputy as temporary. So when the names of the next appointees are going to come in, he has to move out within six months. Okay. And so... Thank you for everybody who, who made that happen. But, but but that's the kind of guys that we do not want to, to lead us um, where we need to be. Because they want to lead us in a circle, yeah? 
Mm-hmm. So, so why me and Louis? Why me and Louis is not actually doing anything new. Mm-mm. They're yeah. actually trying to complete the task at hand. They want this contract to be renewed for another whatever years or however they see fit. And that's why I said, um, this is a wonderful opportunity to see how far they have came as associations, as the state of Hawaii is trying to guide them down this path, yeah? Yeah. And so when we went, so, so when we see why Mea Nui, uh, you know, moving forward in these things, it's only law, you know, so all the general public people that are listening, this is nothing racist, you know? This was already set up because of the illegal acts, yes? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so, so this is not a personal, if we have um, non-beneficiaries or natives who are listening, this is not an attack on anybody. No. This is just that we are not going to settle for the highest rate of diabetes, cancer, homelessness, and all of that. Mm-hmm. We're not going to settle for that. Yeah. yeah? And, and we don't want to have anybody on our islands to settle for anything less either. So I, I advise all the non-natives who are listening Go ahead and support a native, right? Go ahead and support us and go ahead and spread this word, right? That's how you support us. You support us by saying, hey, we actually want better yes. equality for our life, yes. right? And we're not anti, um, anti-government anti this and that. We can pinpoint how we can adjust these things accordingly with Congress and law. And so that's where I think these these things, uh, why Man Nui, in the letter it states that they had 3.5 million from uh, Abercrombie. And so that money was for, uh, you know, for farming and some other things. No, yes. No, it wasn't for other things. It was only for one thing. Um, Neil Abercrombie made a promise to the state that he would invest in agriculture. For the whole but state. For the whole state. Not just one place. Not just one place. Yeah. Not just for one people, but for all and everybody throughout the state. So he gave 3.5, not to Waimea Nui, but to the Department of Agriculture. Yes. Now, Waimea Nui got involved because of the greenhouse. Yes. So the greenhouses will be built I, I don't know. I have no clue. But that's supposedly to be the plan. Greenhouses will be built within that three point five million dollar complex or whatever it's gonna be. And so and so and so that's thank you for that update too, because because it brings us back to square one, right? The Department of Interior is the oversight for DHHL as co trustees. Yeah. Then you have the state under DHHL that tries to do whatever they, they, they can finagle because let's not mistake it, every state land you see undeveloped, they're being sold and it's being violated because these properties that they're selling is violating the trust. See, the trust in the public trust, these are for the support of the public schools and public educational institutions for the betterment and conditions of the native Hawaiians as defined in the Hawaiian homes. So I think our situation has been for a while that, you know, the good old boy club has been, of course, you know, within the 501c3 ranks of the Homestead Association, that's how the state is being able to maneuver is off this nonprofit. So we need to break this nonprofit. It's like a slavery bondage. Yes, yeah. We need to break this. Yeah. We need to break this contract with the associations yes. and the and the state. Because once we break that contract with the state, then now we are in our own control. We have our own set of rules and now we That's see already it in place. Mm-hmm. It's, it's already, already in place. There. And they're just managers and how they have managed is through five oh one C three um, nonprofits. So, so if there's anything I want, I want to leave everybody with tonight is, you know, Waimea Nui is not doing nothing new. This is actually Kanai Oluvalu. This is actually OHA. This is actually DHHL's plans from the beginning of their creation. Yeah. This was the end goal. The end goal is to try and extend this last round of a fucking goal. For all of us, 
unless yeah. we say no, no and pull together and come up with a solution. So, and that means that whatever is happening with Waimea Nui will affect every single Hawaiian, Hawaiian home. Yeah. Every and Hawaiian and, and Hawaiian and homes. Every Hawaiian, no matter what your blood quantum is. Every Hawaiian will feel the repercussion yes. of this. But if we educate and inform like how we're doing now, yeah. I think we'll be able to manage this then more than to try and fix it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because cause right now where we're headed, we have all the documents from Act 359 to the apology going all the way down to public law of the Homestead Commission Act to to the north uh, to the ordinance of 1787 right to, to the true act of yes. homesteading so these things are only applicable to the 13 colonies northwest of the ohio right. river that's right but people don't people don't understand these things and that's what we're here for is to let them know that the scheme from 1787 to 1921 to 59 all the way through all creation and whatnot they have to keep on playing these they, games. They use the because, same strategy, yes. Because it's the end of the game. Yeah. And the last game was, was the 100 year contract. And so now we're, in, we're, we're at, we are definitely at exciting times because now you get to, there's, there's no better feeling of being alive when you don't have nothing, when everything has been ravaged and taken from you. This is the time to feel the most alive because when you have everything, then you just want more. Yeah. Are you scared to lose it? And that's you scared to lose it. But when you have nothing are. and you have experienced loss of life and you have seen time pass and injustice come and go, this is exciting times it because is, yes. the truth always comes to light. And as we see it, the truth is coming to light. And, and that's why I just urge everybody on the wave if they can continue um, letting people know about attending these meetings, learning a little bit more of what's the possibilities when we can all say no or all say, I don't like it, because that means we are able to draw our conclusion. Yes. And that's what we need to we, we need to really understand. We need to draw our conclusion. Not saying sign a contract. No, I no more contract. Call anything. with that. Right now, I'm saying by rebuilding ourselves, yes. our identity, allows us to be the best that we can be yes. so and it's not government to and government, looking at ourselves no. and what Kelko has allowed us to do yeah, yeah. that's what gives us the hope right. and, the, and, the, and the and the confidence yes. that we're going to execute this as a family yes as a family all of us yes. as a family and, yeah. and and you know people are, oh how are you going to get everybody agreeing about i'll so give you guys one shot we got thirteen thousand people already supporting us native hawaiian successors all of that on Big Island, they have only 9,000 homes, setters that they put on the land. We got them outnumbered on our island. We yes. can change our destination yes. one island at a time. Yes. And, that's how we, and that's how we have to do it, right? As we guide everybody and we're showing everybody we're being honest and we're showing them the documentations and the implementations, then now when they see results, then they will come. They don't see results. They never lost anything. Right. 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 They never lost anything. Nobody put no money in. Mm. Right. Yeah. <laughs> we just, we just, yeah, nobody, nobody threw nothing in. We took Pule. Pule is a good number, right? We like that. And that's how I felt everybody paid in. Everybody continued to pray for these missions. And so now we, we conducted it to the best we can to bring it to our family members to come up with a solution. Yes. Right. And that's what I'm here tonight is to show you guys from the things that I have, Pala Pala and the information and the kupuna that we work with. Um, we're ready to hold uh, meetings, kuka, and um, share these things. Whoever's interested and whoever really wants to, you know, hold more in these things. Because I know when people hear DHHL, it just takes the win out of them, right? So many people got violated. They don't even want to hear it. And I fucking believe that. But... Um, that's why I only can humbly ask mm -hmm. if you guys want to participate because this is for your children, children's children's. Yes. Right. And that's why it's so urgent because if you don't want to do it for us, at least listen and try to do it for your children mm -hmm. because you think uh, we had it bad now. Yeah. Wait till they extend a hundred years on us. Yes. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you think this is bad, 
you wait to the extent a hundred year contract on all the existing leases on our waters on our harbors on our fucking crown lands on our reforestation lands on our maunas on our sacred areas at our evs you name it right that's what we're up against yes. and this is what i believe is it shouldn't it's not going to be an overwhelming thing that's that that's why we need to um continue maybe um educating each other and, and um getting connected because as much as kilikia we have suffered before this is a difference now mm-hmm. we have documents of these 1959 agreements People, people say, "Oh, I read it." No, I don't believe it. Because if you did, then you would truly internalize it and know where we're at. And so that's why we have these documents, which our kupuna probably didn't have in the fifties and the sixties, right? Right. Yeah. When, they, when, when they were making this stance, they didn't have the treaties in hand. They didn't have the federal laws. They didn't have the rule book to the right. State Admissions Act. Yeah. But now we do have it. Yes. So when you see Haleoku here and you see pictures with Kamakau and and um, Kahele and all of those politicians, because they have seen the paperwork, they have read it for themselves, and that's how we have been able to win those people over. We didn't say, "Hey, you guys no more treaty. You guys got our stuff." We start at the proper time frame for them. What is your job and title as managers? Mm-hmm. And that's how, and that's how we got to win people over. It wasn't through threatening or bullying. Um, we had these documents. We pull up the 1921 obligation. We pull up the statehood obligation, and we ask them, read this paragraph out of, to us right now. And they come to their own conclusion that they're managers. So mm-hmm. we're 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 updating our managers too, right? Right. Because 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 that's how we're looking at it too. Um, we yeah. gotta, we gotta update them. How much of them are reading what we read, mm. right? Or they're, or are they being negligent, right, about it? But if you have it on hand, and you're willing to communicate with them, and everybody tells the same story with the evidence, I think that's a little bit more harder for them to turn a blind eye, yeah? yeah. Right, right. And now, and now we have cameras. Back in the seventies, when things was happening. Things was just getting arrested. Right. People was lying. They was doing all kinds of illegal yes, stuff. Yes. But now all we gotta do is press record, and everybody's personality changes. Oh yeah, big. Everybody time. changes because now everybody gotta have eth- ethics. Everybody gotta have um, management over themselves, right? And that's what and, and that's what I think is the difference now than it was before. Mm-hmm. Um, I tell you guys the laws, Act Three Five Nine, the Hawaii Homes Commission Act. You look in your phone, you get them in less than ten seconds. Mm-hmm. Everybody has it. Now everybody has a loaded weapon, right? Right. Kepa. Everybody's brain is loaded. Right. So, Kepa, can you recap again, in a nutshell, what we just didn't talk about, if you can? So, in a nutshell, um, everything led up to Waimea Nui and the letter that brought everybody's concerns, which everybody should be concerned. Um, this letter is is basically one of the final stages for Kanai Olavalu, the mission of OHA, and the mission statement for DHHL, which is self-sufficiency and self-governance. And so these things are are what we're trying to bring to our family members to let them know that they haven't scaled okay. the successors. Okay, and so, so Auntie can read can read the letter so everybody knows why why we're talking about this letter like this. What why how come we had this meeting? Um, just us. Um, so everything everything is based off of just the homestead associations, Governor Ige guys, and the department. They right. never scaled us, the waitlisters and successors. So in law, we still exist, and we are the majority. Mm-hmm. And so the small number of 9,000 is easy to maneuver because it's only 9,000 people. Yeah. And they're underneath 501c3s. Mm-hmm. So they're a corporate entity. Pretty much mm-hmm. most of yes. them. Yes. Yeah. All they're the all the associations entity. are. They have to have they're it not, to get the money. They're, they're, that's, yeah, to that's, get the money. And, that's and, the and only way they can access them. the money. We're not blaming them. All yeah. we're saying is just, they're compromised. They are. Yes. And the only way we can break this compromise is to renegotiate, or not negotiate, but terminate that contract that they have had. Yeah. And to contra- and to, to cut that contract off so we all can reevaluate our position and our life right now to a better shot. 
So can Auntie read the letter, a fast one? So that it's a short one. Oh, yeah. What does it? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Are you stopping it? No. No. Oh, what you think? Oh, you need the light. Oh. <laughs> okay. So this is what the letter says. Waimea Nui is a community development initiative established to empower the native Hawaiian people of Waimea region, which includes South Kohala, Waipio Valley, Hamakua, with the ultimate goal of self-governance and self-determination. We, Waimea Nui, are seeking to be a Hawaiian homestead regional government outside of the state of Hawaii and the U.S. federal laws. In 1969, the Shakopi Midwakatan Sioux community gained federal recognition as a tribe. They created a government and developed an economic system. With the assistance and guidance of the Department of Interior, similar to the process that the Shakopi tribe followed, Waimea Nui is forming an independent, self-governing body with a charter, constitution. a constitution. Federal law under 43 CFR Part 48.6 defines this entity. 43 CFR Part 50 provides procedures for re-establishing a formal government-to-government -government relationship with the Native Hawaiian community. Waimea Nui plans to build an agriculture park, equestrian center, cemetery, golf drive range with food and beverage facilities, water bottling plant, recycling center, etc. Governor Abercrombie set aside $3.5 million for this project. That's only for the Ag Project. And some of those resources have already been expended towards road infrastructure at Waimea Nui. Please come to our next quarterly meeting on May 2nd, 2019 at 5.30 p.m. at Kuhio Hale. Another date to remember is Election Day, May 11th, 2019 from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. at Tutu's house, Mahalo Alika. Okay, so so for all you guys out there, um, please attend. And if you guys can't attend and you guys want to know more, actually contact your nearest office, whether it's um, DHHL or whether it's um, OHA, and then, you know, maybe even ask them about this. Because I'm pretty sure they know a little bit too about these things that are that are taking place, yeah. Right. And maybe ask for a little bit more, like what is their involvement? But uh, yes, we do encourage you guys all to show up. Um, you know, this is this is not, you know, come come as you feel. But just remember, it is an educational um, event, and you know, it's people like um, who who are holding these things. Um, they want respect too, so they can present, right? Yes. And so we can all agree to disagree, um, but I, I do encourage everybody to come out and listen and um, get updated to how far the state of Hawaii has come to try and uh, get us into another contract. Fedrick. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Right on, Kepla. Thanks for thank you for your for time. all of that updates yeah. and. Mahalo to you yeah. and the Kanaka Rangers and all of yes, you guys. And, and, yeah, yeah. And if, and, if, and if anybody has any more, um, you know, anything in depth they want to talk about or get in contact with us, you can contact us, uh, contact the council at beneficiary.trust.council um, at gmail.com. Okay. Can you say that one more so time? Beneficiary.trust.council at gmail.com and yeah. so there is a there is another meeting coming up on may 5th too i believe i could be wrong but somewhere around that date the dhhl department will have its meetings um i think out in Kau and then out in the hilo area so we'll try and keep you posted 
But thank you, Andy, Lili U, for your you. time and your effort. Always out there. And PE for um, inviting me over to uh, give a little update on what's been happening. And, and um, mahalo to all you guys who tuned in or are going to see this later. Um, you guys are all needed. And um, please show up. Please reach out. And we look forward to um, making things happen on our end. Right. Mahalo, Kepa. And you have a good Mahalo. evening. Thank Ahoy you, guys. Ho. Aloha. Love you, guys. Love Aloha. you, guys. Okay. Bye. Okay, Ooh. so, Auntie. That was a lot that of That was a lot of information, everybody. And so I seen there was a couple um, questions. And I think one of them was um, how can we as non Kanakamoli support Mahalo Tita Yumi for that question. Um, yeah. Kepa said it. It's, um, you know. Come, come participate. Just uh, witness. Um, and yes. yeah, pass and on then, information. And then you'll find your yeah. place. Yeah. Come. Come and, and just be around and just um, be wherever things are happening. And you, you'll find your stream where you want to go. You know, there's so many things that it's hard to be involved in everything all at the same time so oh we have um, no choice we're, we're i mean we cannot we so. try to yeah I, I, let me tell you this we try really hard we may not sleep and we may tag each other i can't go can you do this can you do that so you know get involved and be part of that tag system so that we can keep in touch with everything that's going on yes we have to you know, and we try to. So, um, thank you yeah. for that question. So, um, Waiman Nui is a 51C3. Who is this? Uh, that, that's from Tito Kanoi. Um, I think all the associations have to have a 501C3, right? No, they don't right? have to. Well, no, to um, access the monies that yes, they were. Yes, to access. They were, um, yeah. I know. Um, there was monies from. So Waimea Nui is um, Waimea Hawaii Homesteaders mm -hmm. Association, and they uh, took on Waimea Nui, which was to branch out <clears throat> and take all of the homestead areas that are in the northern part, uh, the northern section of the Big Island, uh, Moku Nui o, o, o Keavi. So that's who that is, Waimea Hawaii Homesteaders Association, but. In case you are not familiar with what is Hawaiian Homes, Hawaiian Homes, um, they have designated some of the lands as Hawaiian Home Lands. So when you look at the map, you go, oh, wow, well, this is Hawaiian Homes. It's, it's a lot. But, but let me give you a broader perspective. All the land that is not developed is Hawaiian Homes. Yeah. Is Hawaiian Homes. Yep. Undeveloped lands. Undeveloped lands. Subject to native tenants. Yes. So no. that gives you a really broad picture. And all the land that has been developed has been on your family land, crown land, government land. Trust lands. Trust lands. I know. And we're pretty much the uh, a lot of the homeless population, houseless yes. population. Yes. So, I mean, go figure all this beneficiary stuff and... Our people are still suffering, so obviously they failed, like Kepa said. Oh, right? yeah, they In failed, they breached, yeah, they breached, abandoned, they, they took your money and they spent it on whatever it is that they wanted to do. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, we don't want a re renewal of any more of their heaven. Yes, and don't live in fear. Yeah. Don't yeah. live in fear. That's their tactic. Yeah. So I'm not really sure what happened last night, but last night was a UXO meeting on detonated ordinances. Uh, for a Waimea, and I'm sure on other parts of the island. And there you go, another failure. They bring the attention of that after almost 100 years. <laughs> so, <laughs> you see, and so we already know that there are, there is no detonate, undetonated or detonated ordinances in Waimea at all. Mm -hmm. So we have our own, many of us have our own different theories about what they're trying to do is condemn the land. Yep. And then they can sell it for cheap. To themselves. And move, to themselves yeah, to and themselves. then move people out and, to make it an And then urgency. resell it to yeah. developers. like Or to the military. Are, the, yeah, the biggest developers. Yeah. So, um, yeah. so you know that game. every single Hawaiian is important. 
One thirty second. Mm -hmm. The original trust. The original trust. Okay, so that was kind of the recap, and I hope you guys. Um, I'll put Keppa's email in the beneficiary trust council um, email um, called BTC, and yeah, it's located on Mokuakeave and. They're part of the Kanaka Ranger program as well up in Humuula, which is Mauna Kea Access. So yes, our people are yeah, so bless holding these it down young from men Hakuloa who, to Humuula, yes. Mauna, all the way around. Yes. So And so if you're from another island, get involved. Get uh, involved. Mm -hmm. Because this also uh, uh, it applies to you and your right to claim that which belongs to you. So get to know your fam family. It's time to break out that genealogy. Mm -hmm. Grandma's alive. Find out about your genealogy. Where are you from? Mm -hmm. And don't be afraid. No, don't forget to pray. Mm -hmm. well, mahalo nui for watching. Mahalo. And um, hopefully this um, video can go far. And this will be on our podcast too. We're setting up a new podcast. So stay tuned. Aloha, aloha. aloha.